podcast by Friday, episode 30. I do a lot with affiliate product. An affiliate product is just simply a business uh, arrangement that you make with a company that when you promote their product, you get a small commission. Podcast by Friday with Bill Griggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people to create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination and to get their voices heard. I'm Kingsley Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And you're listening to Podcast by Friday. Good morning, Kingsley Grant. How are you this uh, beautiful day? Hey, Bill. I am doing fantastic. I... If I was doing any better, I had to pinch myself and ask myself, am I okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great way to start the day. Uh, you know, we have been uh, really cranking up the podcast lately. I hope the uh, the listeners appreciate the new dedication and the new uh, way that we are uh, going about creating content that we believe will help them to build their podcast fast. Yeah, I think it's a great way to model basically to, you know, that aspiring podcaster that it's okay that, you know, it's as you go, you don't have to have it all perfectly laid out and have a perfect way of doing things. You just kind of tweak and you make it happen. So we're modeling, I guess, right now, I believe, to the listener that, hey, it's okay, you know, <laughs> and your your audience will be able to appreciate the fact that you're human. You do have these moments. and us as veteran podcasters, if we can be doing this kind of stuff, stepping up our game, then they can be encouraged to do the same as well. Yeah. You, and, you know, uh, we always uh, say that action cures procrastination. And this has been one of those um, things that we wanted to do this year to uh, make Podcast by Friday a better resource for our listeners. So our um, focus uh, right now has been on the money side of podcasting, how um, people use podcasts to create sources of income and revenue. And, you know, that's really the bottom line, right? Because a business that a person goes into, if you're not making money, then you don't have a business. So I'm really excited about these last couple of episodes we've done, you know, episode 33, 34, 35, and now episode 36, which we are going to talk about today, which is how to make money with your podcast, selling others' products. Man, I really am excited about being able to talk about this because it's one other way of generating revenue. Exactly. Um, one of the reasons why you might want to sell other people's products is just for the simple fact that the products are already made. There, There's something out there that you don't have to create from scratch and that helps you overcome procrastination uh, because you don't have to have a design phase and an ideation phase and all of these other things before you get going because the products have already been made. And so um, if you just go and make sure that that product is a good fit for your audience, you're ahead of the game. Yeah, it's true because I think it's, Sometimes procrastination come a person keeps on putting off because they're wondering, well, I don't have an idea yet. I don't have a product yet. So I think it's like they are not thinking that they don't have to reinvent the wheel because it's there. Why not find someone, like you just said, who is, have done something similar? And if you can tweak something like that or find a way to sell what they've done and you being the person as the expert – saying to your audience, you know, I know what's good for you. I know what's best for you. And here is what I have found. And they know, like, and trust you. They will prefer to come from you, even though it's not your product. They prefer to buy it through you because they trust you. Yep. You know, um, if you if you don't believe this or you hadn't thought that this was true, um, just think about, you know, some of the fads that have come and gone over the last few years um, that you might see while you're um, – walking through the mall uh like last year everybody was focused on these things called fidget spinners you know these little 
little things of ball bearings that the kids would, would spin in their hands. And when it started out, there were just a few people who had them. But if you walk down through the mall today, there's five or six different stands where people are selling tens and hundreds of different kinds of these little fidget spinners. I mean, it, it's just that way. It's a product that was already made somewhere in, in China, and it just ramped up. And so people grabbed those as something that was quick and easy to uh, to sell. And, it, you know, that's that's the reason for selling other people's products, because it can be quick and easy. Yeah, and you know, it saves you time. And who doesn't want to save time? Because really, that's our precious commodity, right? So if it's there, why not ju- jump on it? And I think what it also does, Bill, it's it tells you it's out there. So it's a proven market. Somebody have, t- have already done the testing, done all the hard work, and you say, hey, you know what? The market is there. So you know already that you're not having to figure out is there a market for it? The reason why the person have done it is because they have found out there's a market for it. So it's a proven market that's already in place. So you now can jump in almost with eyes, your eyes closed and understand you're going to be able to make money by selling a product that's already out there doing pretty well. Yeah, and there there's a lot of wisdom in going for uh, you know a, a market that's already been proven uh, like that. You know, there's an old saying that pioneers have arrows in their back and the <laughs> settlers have a much easier time. <laughs> you know, they, it's the one, who, one. Who, yeah, who goes out first and and finds uh, uh, you know the the product and does all the hard legwork and everything. The person who follows behind them. Uh, to market that the the product has a much easier time because the market's already been established. It's already been proved. It's already been explored. So uh, <laughs> that's just a, a good way to go about it. You know, I think it's also a great uh, way to look at it because, you know, the person who have already been out there, done that and, you know, make the path a bit clearer for you. It also encourages you that if they can do it, then possibly you can as well. But what I like for me, especially, Bill, is that I am not naturally a seller. You know, selling is something I had to get used to. I had to train myself to shift in my mindset. And it wasn't something that, you know, came easy for me. So when I had someone else product, you know, it's almost like it's easier to sell somebody else stuff than selling your own stuff, right? And and because it's... (laughs) Something that you, you don't want to have your stuff get out there and it rejected or somebody shoot it down and, and all that. Well, hey, this is an opportunity for you to have someone else's product being shot down and you don't have to take it personally. So you can learn how to sell and get that into your own blood and build your selling muscles by selling something that's already available and you know the market is there. So get used to selling by selling someone else's product because at some point you'll be selling yours and you will say, hey, you know what? It's only a shift of product. You're still in the game of selling. Yeah, and you know, you think about um, some of the great um, from home business ideas that have come out over the years. When a, let, Let's take Tupperware or Mary Kay, for instance. I know those are things that are typically aimed towards uh, the the ladies of the household, but they're not you know, they're great examples of when somebody has a product for sale, they also have a method by which they sell a proven method, by the way, those products to others. Uh, a Tupperware salesperson does not go out and create their own way of selling Tupperware because it's already been established for them how to go about selling that. And a lot of times when you have an online product or or, or whatever, it's already been established for you. They have built out the funnel. They've got proven methods and swipe files, which we'll get into, um, that teach you how to portray their product in the best way. So you don't have to uh, worry about it, and it gets you in the game quicker. Yeah, and, and that's really the bottom line. So you don't have to, because the, the whole idea of this show is overcome procrastination, right? And so we want you to get that moving because that is a thing that holds you back. And so what I find, Bill, not only do we know why the person needs to do that, but, you know, here's the idea. You said earlier, 
action is what helps us to break through, uh, overcome you know, procrastination. So I find that as soon as soon as we find a product that fits the space we're in, then I believe it's time just to jump on it. Don't wait. Don't second guess. Don't have to deliberate anymore. You now know, and we've mentioned earlier, it's proven market. So as soon as you find that and you feel comfortable, you feel okay with it, then you know, go ahead and start. Get in the game, as you said earlier, but do it right away. Don't wait. And you know, tweak as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect in how you have it all set up. As a matter of fact, if you listen to one of our past episodes, we talked about how, you know, how to sell. And you might want to refer back to that episode when we talked about the different ways to sell your product. And in that manner, get in the game, start right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you mentioned, Kingsley, that it, that it should fit um, your your market and your market space, the, the, your audience. It, it should be something that your audience would find helpful, useful, um, and, uh, you know, would somehow solve one of their problems quicker. The only way you're going to know for sure if that product does that for your audience, it's a fit, is to try it yourself before you begin recommending it. Uh, Kingsley and I have a a very um, rigid policy that we don't recommend or, or suggest or really talk about products that we haven't personally used. And that's why... Uh, I think we've been successful at doing this because you, the listener, know that when we talk about something, we've already gone there and, and looked at it and made sure that it was something that was useful. And I suggest, listeners, that you do that with your audience, that you make sure you try things before you buy them or sell them. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a great point. I think it's so true because your credibility is at stake and it's your name out there, even though it's someone else's product, but because they trust you and they're going to buy it through you, they're taking your word at face value that you have already tested. You've already taken this thing apart, so to speak, and, and you're saying, hey, you know what? I re- wanted to put my name behind it. You know, so for example, I yesterday uh, this in my, in my Facebook group, in my podcasters group, there's a guy who posted something about, you know, a a, a, a uh, PDF, a ebook that someone had written about podcasting and how to get your your first get your 1,000 true fans and all the different things. And it was highly re- re- referred, I recommended. And I, because the guy who re- recommended it, I know him very well and I trust him, and I know he's a very credible guy. And he also said I would not be referring this ebook to anybody unless I found it to be helpful because I know my name and my reputation is at stake. And so I didn't have to think twice about downloading that PDF because why? He told me and told us it's a good, good stuff. And of course, I know the guy who wrote the, e- who wrote the e-book. I also know of him uh, pretty well. So I also trusted the fact that he was the author. So my whole point is that we have our credibility and our reputation at stake, and we have to then guard that by not recommending something that or sell something we would not use ourselves. I think it was Zig Ziglar who was saying at one time before, you know, the late Zig Ziglar, he was uh, having this conversation with this man, and he said he went to his house, and this guy's a salesperson, and the things he's selling, he didn't see in the guy's house. And he said, isn't any wonder you're having problems selling the product? He said, if you don't want to use it yourself, you're not going to have the passion to sell it because you don't really believe in it. Mm -hmm. And so the guy said, oh, okay. (laughs) What else could he have said, right? (laughs) So we are doing the very same thing. But I find also, Bill, that we can sell through referrals. So if you, you, Bill, told me, Kingsley, hey, it's a product that I want to refer to you that would be a great way to sell, I wouldn't think that, I would not have to think twice. I know you, I trust you, I like you. I, I really would not, I would close my eyes and just say, hey, Bill is trustworthy. I will sell it because Bill referred me to this item. So referral is another great way of finding a product to sell. Yeah, I, um, you know, I can think of many examples when, when I've had uh, a referral from somebody uh, 
who I am familiar with through podcasting or through through other things where they've talked about a product and and uh, it piques my interest enough to go and look at it and part of the um uh, motive behind going to look at it was because I knew that the recommendation the referral had come from somebody that I knew um and that I liked and that I, whose opinion I trusted you know I had uh, I had a very great referral last year for the program that I used to monitor my sales. Uh, and that came from uh, uh, another podcaster that I listened to that uh, Kingsley, you and I met uh, uh, just a few years ago at the podcast movement conference. And uh, when he mentioned that he used this product in a different way, he was using it to interview, uh, to keep track of his interviews. I said, you know, that might just work. And so I tried it, and uh, as a result of that, using that product, the sales that I was making increased ridiculously. Uh, I went to eighty nine, or excuse me, ninety eight percent. I'm a little dyslexic there. Uh, <laughs> ninety eight percent of the sales that I entered into that system, I was able to close and to sell, and that. I would have never thought of using that product if this person hadn't referred it to me. So anyway, the power of referral is, is very, very underestimated, but it, it is something that uh, I think you should pay attention to. I agree. And I think so. referral, as soon as you find a, a product that fits, we mentioned those two, but I think it's also great. And I think it's a great, good way. And, and most people are, apt to want to reach as many people when they're launching a product and they are looking for someone to help them to get the word out there. Again, having done the, the, the legwork and filtered out and vetted the person and their product, and you're now okay with that and you, a person is launching something, it's a great time to get in on the ground level because they're willing to do even a great way of saying, hey, you know what, you sell my product and I give you a commission of this amount. So it's a great way at a launch to find products that are even new to the market to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when your um, friends and associates are doing launches of a new product, um, they sometimes will have programs in place where you can become a JV or joint venture partner with them, or you can become an affiliate with them. Those are both um, terms that we have discussed in previous episodes, which means that you simply are promoting their product in exchange for a small commission that you receive that the customer never sees any increase in uh, in the sale of price for the product. So, you know, to them it's invisible, but to you, you're making a small uh, commission on it. And so when someone is launching their new product, if you become come on as either an affiliate or a joint venture partner, your odds of, of making sales through that will definitely increase because you're doing it in coordination with their launch. And, and, it, and there's a buzz around that because they're doing everything to get the word out there. So you are just like when a person is searching and know you're selling as well. People will buy it through you because they want to get in on the new and shiny object. It's coming out. Let's get it. I want to be in on it. So I find that it's a great time around a launch, but also around events. For example, this podcast event that's coming up, Podcast Movement and Podfest in, in Orlando, is a great way to sell a product because you know the product at that time may be a ticket, for example, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You can coordinate that product you're selling around those events that are coming up. And, and, you know, it could be T-shirts, it could be accessories, whatever it might be, is a great way to make money selling other people's products. Yeah. Um, when you're, when you're uh, having an event uh, coming to town and you know that there, there's a product uh, to, um, to go along with that, it, it can really give you a concentrated amount of sales from, from a very um, – targeted group you know the folks who are going to this event or who who want to participate in it always want some memento of it or um some uh 
to take home some system that was talked about at the event or, or whatever. And if you have that product and it's related to the event and it's been properly promoted during the event, that's a, an opportunity for you to make sales there. So. And, and, and it's almost like riding someone's coattail, so to speak, right? <laughs> yep. So, you know, it, it, if, for instance, we, we talked about both PodFest and the podcast movement just uh, just now. Those are two events that are coming up. And if we were to promote them on our podcast uh, through, for instance, our affili- an affiliate link to either of those events, our listeners are more likely, if they were going to that event, to come to us because you know, they like to uh, help to reward us for, uh, you know, what we do that may have helped them. I mean, it may be a small thing. It may be a large thing. But, you know, when you are choosing where you'll where you'll go to get something, you usually go to the people who told you about it. And that, that would be us. And it, it's pretty amazing just how effective a method this would be. And you can use this method in your podcast. And as again, you know, I think it's seizing every opportunity that comes your way. And I think in, 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 um, along with that bill is also seasonal product because there are things that comes out where doing certain like season, for example, coming up as we're recording this podcast, we're in the month of February. We know Valentine is a seasonal thing. Well, is there a product around Valentine that fits your, your space? There may be, I don't know that you could probably sell, and it's someone else's product. You could do that, and it's a great way to take advantage of this season because people are thinking about that thing. And hey, it's not a, uh, you know it's not a, uh, for you to to overthink it, mm-hmm. right? It's a no brainer. Jump in and get going. Yeah, and you know if your a podcast is about business or uh, or small business or doing something like that. Well, it's tax time right now. Maybe it's a perfect time for you to talk about a uh, a tax related product on your on your show and get a sponsorship with them. Somebody like FreshBooks or QuickBooks or or uh, or Stripe or you know one of those things that would help someone to make um, you know to to make their tax life easier. Um, it's a great time. Yeah, and um, so if you are in the financial space and stuff, this could be a way to seize on this tax moment and those financial um, products that you could do. So I think we talked about so far, Bill, then the why and about the when. Now, here's a question that most people have, right, is how. How do I go about doing that? Hmm. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we get into that, I think we should probably have a word from our sponsor. This is the section of our show where we would normally pause for a word from our sponsor. Now, if you would like to be that sponsor of the Podcast by Friday show, and you have a product or service that you feel would be of benefit to new entrepreneurs starting their new podcast, then contact us at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com. And we'll see if you'd be a good fit. So, Bill, how do we go about selling someone else's product? That, that's really, I think, is, is a tricky, you know, the tricky part, I believe, for, for that person who's listening. So, it's, yeah, you're right. Is that is, is the what, the, the product, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow. Um, usually, you have to have some sort of arrange, arrangement or agreement with the uh, person whose product you you plan to sell um and the only way to get that um uh, agreement in place is to contact the product vendor in a lot of cases there are links on a website you know that is promoting the product uh, that um will help you along with that i know when i was looking for affiliates products to that i could offer um, if I had in mind a particular product, I would type in the name of that product into Google and then the word affiliate and see what resulted in a lot of times I could find an affiliate program. So are you suggesting that? So if, for example, if, uh, Cynthia Rotter, which is your other podcast and your business, if you wanted a product, you would type in CNC router or a router affiliate. What would that look like? 
Um, okay, so if I ha- if I were offering a product on, on the CNC Router Tips podcast, um, I might type in CNC Router Tips and then the word affiliate. Okay. On it and uh, do a search, or you know, maybe maybe the product I want to use is um, um, I don't know, Click Funnels. Uh, you know, I type in Click Funnels affiliate, or you know, maybe um, uh, Quicken affiliate, and see you know what's out there. And that's a, I think that's a great way to to quickly find it is you know to get that uh, um, a search as you mentioned before. So it's arra- and then once you've done that, you arrange that by contacting mm-hmm. that pr- product maker, whatever that is, and yeah. see what it is that they have put in place for you to sell their product sure. and, and be able to, to do that. Yeah. And you know, we can, we can talk a little bit about um, more about this um, a little bit later in the episode, but uh, you know, there are other methods of, of going, you know, about getting a relationship that allows you to um, sell other people's products. And one of those methods is to become a licensed reseller. Uh, now, I happen to have such a relationship um, with uh, a company that uh, I think does a fantastic job, Vectric.com. They make um, uh, software that allows people to design Im- incredible uh, looking sign signage and projects and things like that on the CNC router. And I knew that their software was really good. And so I approached the the uh, the company to see what I had to do to become a licensed reseller. That simply means I've got their blessing, their permission to sell their product. And, um, you know, there may be uh, minimum orders and that sort of things involved, but it, it's been a very nice relationship for me. And it's something that, um, you know, is worth doing. You know, if you wanted to sell Harley Davidson motorcycles, <laughs> you have to become a licensed Harley dealer, and this is the same kind of thing. Another method is a joint venture. So we talked about the fact that if we're joining up with someone, and that simply means I'm just going to – for example, if Bill was selling a, a product that fits my space, and I said, man, it would be a great way to join in with him in this venture of selling that product – you, he, he, the term is used sometimes, JV, JV partnership. You're just partnering with someone, joining with them, and on that product, you're together trying to promote, sell, and make money from that. So that's another way I find. And it could be, you know, there's so many different ways, creative ways to join someone in that venture they're they're trying to get out, they're they're um, pr- uh, promoting, and. And use that as an opportunity to make make money as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cool part about joint ventures is you you get your list of listeners together with another person's list of listeners um, that might not have already been, um, you know, hearing the same message at the same time. So joint venture can be very um, a good method for both people involved in it. So um, you know. Uh, I think it's an excellent method. Now, um, I do a lot with affiliate um, products. And, you know, we mentioned that earlier, uh, you know, and an affiliate product is just simply um, uh, a business uh, arrangement that you make with a company that when you promote their product, you get a small commission uh, for doing so. And every, it's basically invisible to the buyer, but... You know, you as the uh, promoter of that would uh, receive income from that. And I've had very good success with that. Um, You know, and there's a lot of examples of companies that have that, like Amazon or eBay. Um, You know, uh, Kingsley, you think of some other um, uh, affiliate products that we um, may have used. Yeah, you know, what comes to my mind right away is Audible. Because I I love the fact that Audible is – so many people are reading books and they love to read electronic books or um actually audiobooks I'm sorry audiobooks and audible is a great way to join a, a, an affiliate with them because they'll give you a small percentage of every book that a person buy through them or if they sign up because you have to sign up through audible and you have a free trial period and you sign up and then 
when you buy books from Amazon, no, uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon's affiliate called Audible, because it's Audible belongs to uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. then you're able to get a commission from that. So I love Audible, and I know a lot of podcasters start off with that because it's an easy, quick, easy, cheap, you know, way, so to speak, to start making money on your through your podcast. Yeah, I used Audible last year to help me achieve my uh, goal. I wanted to read. Um, uh, 60 books uh in in a year and um i got real close i i got to uh, 58 too shy <laughs> it just ran out a year but uh a lot of those were through audible listening to 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 that so uh you know we are audible affiliates so if you want uh to check out you know audiobooks or or whatever you could go to our link at podcastbyfriday.com slash audible and uh, try it out. They'll send you a free, your first book for free to try. Um, you know, and that's really cool because you can also send somebody uh, a book to listen to on Audible. Their first book is free. And it's really uh, a really good program. And I think you'd enjoy it. So also, Bill, uh, you may want to speak a little bit more about this arbitrage idea of also, because I think you have done and understand a bit more about that than I do. So that's another way a person can use to make money. So will you speak to that for a few minutes? Oh, um, yeah. Well, um, I've done a variety of things over the years to try and generate income uh, online. And one of the things that I, I, I tried was online arbitrage. And that's a very fancy word for saying that I go out and I find things that I can buy cheaply and sell for a profit. So buy cheap, <laughs> sell high. Really simple stuff. Um, but um, I, uh, through a program that Amazon has, was able to go out to, let's say, a Target or whatever and find some item that was for sale, uh, you know, in closeout or whatever. And I could buy that product uh, at that closeout price after I did a little market research on Amazon to make sure that I could sell it for more than I bought it for. And then I could box up these products and send them into the Amazon warehouse. And Amazon would take those items off the shelf and put them in boxes and send them to you listeners mm -hmm. and, you know, send me the money. I, other than me going out and finding the initial product and sending it in, my work was done. Amazon advertised it for me. They, uh, you know, they put up the page and, and they did all the promotion and the shipping and then they just sent me a check. So arbitrage, you know, is is a very um, uh, effective way to get started in, in, you know, trying to generate some income. And so I, I've never actually done that, Bill, so I'm glad you mentioned that. And I think it'd be a way, a quick way to get in the game and again also get in the game of selling you know but i also find that people who once you have a podcast going and people who are listening and they're you know they're resonating with what you're you're doing in your podcast you have people reach out to you and ask you would you mind selling a product of theirs on your to your audience mm -hmm. now we all we mentioned before we want you to make sure you screen to make sure it's the right fit because you don't want it to sell something you don't you yourself haven't used. We mentioned that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And but but you have that from time to time, and you can determine whether or not you want to do it. But it's a an option available to you. Yeah, you know, uh, we we've had that already happen in, in the podcast by Friday uh, show with a with a few vendors who've reached out to ask us. And um, so far, the ones that have asked this have, have not been the fit that we're looking for. But um, when and if that uh, product and that relationship is right for you, we will let you know and, and tell you about it. But it does work. It does happen. And, you know, that's um, that's just the reality of it. So um, let's, let's move on. Now, I, I talked a little bit about um, the affiliate... Uh, relationships and 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 uh, things. And I just got briefly into it, and you know, I think we would serve our listeners well if we told them where some of these places are that um, 
uh, have affiliate programs and, and directories and things that, and, uh, you know, in case they want to research this and look into it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We have a whole list of, of what we have used and we believe it will help for the, uh, helpful to you as you're listening. And one of those places is called Commission Junction. It's, uh, I think it's called Commission CJ. Dot com, I think it is, or commission. We'll have a link in the show notes for for each of these places. So okay, so yeah. commission junction is one. I, I that comes to mind right away. Mm-hmm. I've I've used a um, a program uh, called Accelerate. E s e l l e r a t e. They're a listing of products and companies and products that have affiliate relationships available. You have to qualify, but um, you know, it, it's well worth doing. They look at your uh, web page to see if it's if it's a good fit, and you know, then uh, you know you apply, and if uh, you're approved, then you can become an affiliate for one of the products that they sell. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, just Bill, because I think all of these you have to set up, an, set up a relationship through an account of some kind that they can know how to no more pay you, but also to know who you are as a person trying to be an affiliate or to joint venture with them. So another one is called ClickBank. And uh, we will also have the links, in, as Bill mentioned, in the show notes at podcastbyfriday.com slash 36. You will be able to find the links there and of all the, that we have discussed here. So ClickBank is another one. Mm-hmm. Now, I I have uh, used uh, Amazon Associates program, which is uh, their affiliate uh, marketing program. Now, Amazon Associates, there is no cost to you uh, to become an Amazon Associate, but there is an approval process. Uh, they look at your website and a few other things. Uh, and that allows you to put up links to Amazon products that are for sale on your web page or to mention them in a podcast and give a link and someone can, can get that. Uh, this is not to be confused with Amazon FBA which is fulfillment by Amazon, which is uh, when you send in a product, okay, to Amazon. Because that one, you actually pay uh, a fee monthly to send in products to Amazon. So this is Amazon Associates, and this is just for affiliate links. And another one which I really love (laughs) is Bluehost, because if you're going to have to have a website somewhere. Yep. And our suggestion, and we have a link in, our, in the show notes as well, but Bluehost is where you can go and set up an account there so you can sell to your listeners. Those who want, who want to buy a, a domain name, they need to get one. Hey, send them to Bluehost. And you will make a commission by having them as an affiliate. Mm-hmm. And besides that, Bluehost is really good service. I mean, we've been using Bluehost for uh... – I've been using them almost uh, eight years, um, and I I really enjoy the relationship that I have with Bluehost. So, you know, you can check out our uh, resources page. We have a link there to Bluehost if you're looking for a place to host your web page uh, for your podcast. So we'd, we'd appreciate it if you check that out. Now, um, one, one of the things... Uh, you know, when you're trying to think about uh, affiliate links and everything um, that a lot of people don't think about, but if there's some website that you really enjoy going to and you use it all the time, chances are you like that enough that you'd recommend it to others and that you hope what others would, would use that website. Well, check that website to see if maybe they have an affiliate uh, program. Uh, Cause you never know. Sometimes they do and you can, um, help your listeners by recommending something that you already enjoy and, you know, making small affiliate commissions through that. And I also mentioned, we mentioned earlier as an affiliate audible and audible.com is also where you can use to get those um, affiliates and have a way to make some money through having people buy a book and get educated and smarter and Mm -hmm. better at running their business. Send them to audible. (laughs) Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Kingsley. Send them to podcast by Friday dot com slash audible. That's our right. affiliate so, link, that's, brother. You're right. I, I, you know what? Stop my back, 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 back. Okay, here we go. Let's 
Retake. Take two. <laughs> you go to podcastbyfriday.com slash audible. That's where you need to go. I was just testing out to make sure you're awake. And I guess you'll prove me right. You're awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, we are Audible affiliates. And if you do buy uh, a product from Audible, we will receive a small commission at no uh, cost to you. Now we're we're in compliance with the uh, FTC. The f- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, oh, um, now I got a, a check the other day from an affiliate that I had uh, called Rakuten, R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Uh, one of, one of, I have a lot of different websites, and uh, I, I've got to say that it's embarrassing that I received a check from Rakuten, and I don't remember what affiliate product I put up through <laughs> through them on my website, but whatever it is, it's working. So I need to go back through <laughs> and search <laughs> my sites and find that affiliate link so that I can promote it more. Because obviously, I found it helpful at the time, and that's part of the problem when with these different programs. Uh, it. If I knew what product had been sold, I would say, oh, instantly, that was, you know, Profit yeah. Builder, or that was this or that, you know. Uh, but I really don't know which service it had, you know, the affiliate relationship through, you know, these services that, you know, sell multiple ones. So, And and the, the beauty about this, Bill, is that you said it and forget it. That's yeah. what you did. <laughs> I sure did. I wish I hadn't forgotten it. Um <laughs> Anyway, moving, moving on. What can our listeners do today that will help them uh, to grow their income in their podcast? Yeah, I think this is where it comes all down to this, Bill, is what do you now do? You have heard about the why, the where, the when, the how, and all of that. Now, okay, so what? Well, so what is simply this. You need to go and research a product, one that would – fit your space and you would want to sell okay if it's an affiliate go in and set up an account Mm -hmm. you've heard us talk about that set it up today don't procrastinate do it today because that way action as bill said earlier action helps you overcome procrastination and don't you want to make money right away i do Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's much easier to think about the process of making money than it is to actually do something about it. But the quicker you do something about it, take action, the the more likely you are to succeed. So go look up a product that you think would be a good fit for your audience and sign up for uh, sign up to be an affiliate with that product. And that's what we ask you to do today. And let us hear from you. I would love to hear what you've done. So, again, you can always send us an email at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com. We'd love to hear from you. We read all the emails ourselves. And we want to make sure, you know, it's one way to hold for, for accountability. Let us know what you're doing. Also, if you are on, is on Facebook, which I think most people are, but if you're there, join us in a Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. And that way we can share with your wins with everybody in the group. And we'd love to comment on that and give you a shout out in that group as well. Knowing you took action from this episode today. Yeah, you know, listeners, we know that this episode was kind of like drinking from the fire hose. We gave you a lot of information in a very short time. You don't need to know it all. You don't need to know every phase and aspect of this. Pick one thing and do something with it. Mm. And then let us know how it works. And you know what? You will be so so much further ahead than people who take no action at all. So I know you can succeed. I'm happy and I'm waiting to hear about your successes. So... 
Thank you again for listening in to another episode of Podcast by Friday. I, I've been talking with my main man, Kingsley Grant, uh, about how you can uh, use Make money through product, right? Sending other people's products. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> that's why it's really great to have a, a, a co host. It's how to make uh, money with your podcast by selling others' products. And you know what? You can do this. We've done it. You can do it too. Podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create your minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker.